morning, beloveds. Um, it's a little hot out there. I stayed up too late last night. <laughs> um, now that we can go see movies again, my husband and I have resumed date night. Uh, and I and I and I fully encourage you to have a date night, whether it is with yourself, whether it is with your partner, whether it is with a friend, um, you know, or a family member. It's a when I say date night, what I mean is a night set aside where you do something special, special, because uh, we get into routines. And I know last year. For my husband and I, it was very routine. Uh, we got up, we went and exercised, we came home, we did what we needed to do, you know, like giving the cat the medication, took and then got ready for work, went to work, came home, ate dinner, and then just kind of collapsed on the couch. Um, and then went to bed and did it all over again. And... We had things like going to Ren Fairs and go doing like 5Ks that broke up that monotony or, and going to movies, you know, that broke up that routine. And last year they were gone. All of it. All of it was gone. And so uh, this year we're, we're trying to claw some of that back. And so we've set aside Thursday night <laughs> to go to the movies. Like, go to a movie theater, sit in a movie theater, and watch a movie. Um, and it's good because then we talk about the movie, you know, it gives us something to talk about for the next couple of days. And uh, exchange interesting articles on and, you know, just in general. And generally, we'll eat dinner, you know. Sometimes he brings dinner to me, and then we go to the movies, and some, because the restaurants, yeah. And Thursday night's a good night to go, because, you know, there were like six people in the theater. <laughs> but, um, have a date night. Have a date night. Pick a date night, even if it is just with yourself. You are dating yourself, especially if it's just with yourself. Pick a date night. Go do something. Um, you know, if, you, if you're if you not comfortable in a restaurant, get to go and go to the park. Uh, it doesn't even have to be night. It can be afternoon. It can be morning. You know, go do something that is out of the ordinary. Something that is special. Um, and if every week is too hard, then, you know, try every other week. But do it at least twice a month. Do it at least twice a month. Do something out of the ordinary for yourself twice a month or every week. All right. I know I'm I always, I, I, the kind, compassionate thing I do every day because that's super important to me. But I think that you should do something to interrupt your routine um, and, and don't let it become routine. <laughs> that's one of the things that I like about the movies is because we go, when we go to the movies, it gives us something different to talk about for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, depending on the movie. Because trust me, we're still talking about the Green Knight. Um, all right, it is August 20th, and our title is I See My World Clearly and Rightly. Blind is this world, few are those who, who clearly see. I'm going to assume that this is an Indian text. Uh, and I don't have any idea how to pronounce this. Dham, Dhammapada, Dhammapada, D H A M M A P A D A. <clears throat> God looks out upon his universe and declares it to be good. The eyes of the Lord are never dimmed. Perfect sight is in my is my inheritance, and I see all things clearly, easily, and normally. Through my eyes, the light of the world enters my consciousness, bringing me beauty and glory. I have spiritual vision in my consciousness and perfect sight in my eyes. There is nothing to distort God's eternal beauty, for I look at it and I see it as it really is. All creation is harmonious and in right, por right proportion. My eyes see the harmony and balance of, he of heaven in every scene. 
Looking for good in my world is easy, for God is everywhere, and his intelligence reveals itself on my pathway. With my eyes focused on good, my days are blessed with demonstrations. There is no strain in seeing the hand of the Lord made make glorious his creation. There is no strain in seeing the hand of the Lord make glorious his creation. I look upon the riches of the of glory in all nature. I look upon the image and likeness of God in every person. Around me perfection awaits my recognition, and within me is the vision of true holiness. Beauty beckons to me in all things, and love calls out to me from all people. I dedicate my eyes to seeing God in all and through all this day. The light of the world is the light of my eyes. I behold the truth in every situation and the Christ in every man. Darkness cannot limit me, for the true light is from within. There is nothing to becloud my sight, for all life cooperates with me in seeing clearly. My eyes are blessed with clarity, and the kingdom of heaven is in view. God looks out upon his heaven by means of my eyes, and I let this perfect action take place. I need no help in doing this, for God's eyes are my eyes now. All right. <clears throat> so initially, a couple of thoughts are that was kind of the reason why last year I was really focused on um, the project of every day looking for something beautiful. Uh, because the world was crazy. <laughs> I mean, the world's still crazy, but uh, <clears throat> so it was my goal every day to find something beautiful and post it. Uh, I'm still doing that, but I'm not doing it every day. Uh, it it's that was a lot. That was a lot um, to to find and and make those posts every day. Uh, I'm still trying to do it several times a week, just not as intensely as I did last year. And. Uh, because when you look for the good, you find it. When you look for the beautiful, you find it. Um, and some days, especially after the flowers stop blooming, because that's when I started, when the flowers were really blooming. Um, it makes you expand your, your definition of beautiful. <laughs> it makes you expand your definition of beautiful. So you would find different things that would that you hadn't thought about as beautiful and then you then you look at him and you go, oh no no that is beautiful and so that is what he's talking about here seeing with the eyes of god things anything can be beautiful <clears throat> anything can be beautiful it is being willing to look with the eyes of god to be to look with the eyes of spirit uh and see beyond our rather narrow you know cultural societal religious definition of beautiful. Um, you know, ad agencies have this very definite idea of what beautiful is, and most of us don't look like that. So, you know, by looking with the eyes of God, we expand our definition of beauty. We expand our definition of good. We expand our eyes. And so that, I see a meme occasionally that says, if I, if we could, um, if we could see each other's souls rather than our bodies, we'd have a different idea of what beauty is. Uh, and I honestly think we can. We can see each other's souls. It's just being willing to look and to look a little deeper. So, uh, yeah. And um, there was there was another point, and whatever it was, I'll get back to it. Okay, <clears throat> I see my world clearly and rightly. The other thing is, is as you can see, <laughs> see, seeing clearly is I need a little help. And so this would be a treatment that I might consider doing, you know, uh, regularly about my eyesight, like my physical eyesight. If I was so inclined, we'll see, maybe. I can see my world clearly and rightly. Blind is this world. Few are those who clearly see. Uh, Dumpada. From the, Dumpada. the Dumpada. I'll have to look that one up. Okay. God looks, up, looks upon God's universe and declares it to be good. Because God is. 
The eyes of the Lord are never dimmed. Perfect sight is my inheritance, and I see all things clearly, easily, and normally. So one of the things that you want to think about is when it says, I see all things clearly, easily, and normally, um, <clears throat> we're not talking about just looking with our physical eyes. We are talking about looking with our physical eyes, but we're also talking about looking with our spiritual eyes. And part of that is feeling. Okay? Part of that is feeling. So when you are looking at things, you are also feeling things. So pay attention to your feelings when you're looking. All right, that's part of your spiritual eyes. That's how we see each other's souls is with our feelings, <clears throat> along with our eyes. <clears throat> Through my eyes, the light of the world enters my consciousness, bringing me beauty and glory. I have spiritual vision in my consciousness and perfect sight in my eyes. I have spiritual vision. All right, that's what I'm talking about. The feelings, that's, that, that's part of your visual, that, that's part of your spiritual vision. There's a lot more to it than that, but that's a good place to start. And then I'm going to let you dig through the levels because even I don't know what else is included in, in spiritual vision. I certainly don't know. And so I would say it starts here, but it also starts with your feelings. There is nothing to distort God's eternal beauty for I look at it and see it as it really is. Again, that goes back to your feelings. All creation is harmonious and in right proportion. My eyes see the harmony and the balance of heaven in every scene. Because we are looking for the spirit. If we look for it, we'll find it. All right. Got, but you got to be willing to look for it. That's one of the may, that's one of the reasons why we don't ever want to look away from another another person's pain. All right? Because in that pain you will see the beauty of the soul. And that's what you're reaching for when someone is in pain. You are reaching for the beauty of their soul and holding that as they experience pain. All right? Pain is not beautiful. I, do not let me make you believe that pain is beautiful but when you can look at someone and look through their pain and see the truth behind it see the truth behind them see the spiritual being behind that pain and you acknowledge what they are suffering you know then you are giving them a gift uh, and it's not easy it's not easy it's not easy but don't turn away from other people's pain all right that gift, that gift, there's beauty in that. There is not beauty in pain, but being willing to look through it at the soul and seeing the spirit within, that's beautiful. Uh, okay. Looking for good in my world is easy, for God is everywhere, and God's intelligence reveals itself on my pathway. That's what I was talking about, that photo project that I did last year. Mm -hmm. Why I continue to still do it. With my eyes focused on good, my day is blessed with demonstrations. If you look for it, you'll find it. There is no strain in seeing the hand of the Lord make glorious God's creation. Ah, that was the other thing. That's what I love about clouds and sunrises and sunsets, especially when in encouraged with clouds. It's like every day the master artist creates these gorgeous sunrises and these gorgeous sunsets and these gorgeous clouds all day long. And they change all day long and they last for an instant. And then they're gone. And God does it all the time. So right there, you know, if you if you just go out and look at the clouds, I mean, some days we, we'll go for days without clouds, but I we're pretty good here. We there's a lot of moisture in the air, so you know. But there's going to be, if, if you, where you live, you don't see a whole lot of clouds, then there's something. There's something that Spirit does every single day. 
that that's ephemeral because it doesn't last but it's beautiful and that 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 kind of beauty only God could do that only God could do that um so that it's there's no strain in seeing the hand of the good because I mean sometimes I take pictures of these clouds and they look like paintings and they're not and I'm just like you know uh, I, I look upon the riches of glory in all nature. I look upon the image and likeness of God in every person. That's what we talk about, seeing God, you know, recognizing that everybody's a godling, that everybody's made from, by, and of God. Uh, around me, perfection wait, awaits my recognition. Wholeness waits my, awaits my recognition. And within me is the ver the vision of true holiness. I'm going to let you define true holiness for yourself. All right? Beauty beckons me in all things, and love calls out to me from all people. I dedicate my eyes to seeing God in all and through all this day. And truthfully, I try to see God every day. And most of the time I'm distracted. And then every now and again, something will catch me and I will go, oh, wow. And for a minute, I'm there. For a minute, I'm there. And so uh, that's my hint. The clouds are my hint to stop and appreciate the beauty around me. You know, it's good to pick an anchor, something that you're going to see every day that you think is beautiful, or you're going to see most days, that will help you to appreciate the beauty of God all around you. Um, clouds are mine. I literally do have my head in the clouds. <laughs> the light of the world is the light in my eyes. I behold the truth in every situation and the Christ in every person. Darkness cannot limit me for the true light is within. And even in the darkness, we have stars. Even in the darkness, we have stars. So the dark's nothing to be afraid of. There is nothing to becloud my sight, for all of life cooperates with me in seeing clearly. Sometimes life is a little too cooperative because I don't want to see clearly, and life proceeds to go to strip away the veil and go, this is what's going on, girl. So life cooperates with me, even when I am less than cooperative. My eyes are blessed with clarity and the kingdom of heaven is in view. Because it's all around us all the time. It takes us being willing to see it. God looks upon God's heaven by means of my eyes and I let this perfect action take place. I recognize that I am God in action. I need no help in doing this for God's eyes are my eyes now. You are a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased always and forever. God has given us this gift. It is up to us to use it. So our mission today, our mission today, well, <laughs> Here's your mission today, should we choose? Here's our mission today, should we choose to accept it? To behold truth in every situation and the Christ in every person. Christ, the Christ consciousness is not something that, that Christians have a lock on. Christ consciousness is just the way Christians define a particular mindset. And the Buddhists would define it as a Buddhist mindset. And uh, I'm not sure what they would call it in Islam. They might call it a Muhammad mindset. I'm not sure. But they might They might also recognize that it's a Christ, consci uh, a Christ consciousness. Um, because their book built on the, the uh, Christian Testament and the Jewish Testament. So, uh, and the Jewish might call it Sophia, wisdom. Uh, but that's the mission. 
to see the Christ in every person you meet, to see that God, to, to see that love, to see the care and attention that God put into that person and recognize that that consciousness, we call it Christ consciousness, because it describe because Jesus was the ultimate example of what we consider the Christ consciousness. He was kind, he was loving, he was healing. You know, he went out to teach, he went out to 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 show people this is who my God is. This is what I do because of, you know, because I am a child of this God and this too you can do. So that's our mission, to see beauty all around us and to see that consciousness that we call Christ consciousness, but other faiths will call it other things, and it's still the same thing in each person. All right, beloveds, I'm going to move into the process of my day. Uh, I'm going to encourage you, as I always do, to do something loving for yourself, do something kind for yourself, do something compassionate for yourself, whatever that is. Uh, I am attempting a, to do breathing exercises every day and I have not been successful uh, because I thought my Fitbit would do it and yeah no not so much so uh, I'm moving into I have a another app on my phone called the insight timer and so I set that up we'll see <laughs> the goal is to do it every day <sighs> five minutes is long and then it's short go figure so whatever it is that you are doing today for yourself that is loving kind and compassionate however big or small it is please Practice your loving, kind, compassion on yourself because you deserve it. Because you deserve it. And because you're banking it. And then you will have more to share with everybody that crosses your path. All right? Start with yourself. Love yourself. Be kind with yourself. Be compassionate with yourself. And then grant that same gift to everybody else that you meet. Um, it's Friday. I am in, uh, intending to go to the park tomorrow, so I should be on with you at 9 a.m., but hey. Um, so do what you need to do to engage your mind and your body today. Go get that face full of sun. I think we're done with the rain for a couple of days. <laughs> um, not that I don't love the rain, because I do. Uh, that's where clouds come in. But go get that face full of sun. Go and do whatever it takes to engage your mind and your body. And open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven now. Use those eyes that God gave you. Use those eyes and look with, with, look with that God consciousness, that Christ consciousness, and see the beauty around you. And drink plenty of water. Please, drink plenty of water. All right, beloveds. Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you on Facebook Live. I'll be back with you at 9 a.m.-ish. <laughs> Ish, because it's Saturday. Um... I intend to go play with the squirrels. And you can always catch us on the YouTubes. The Creative Life Spiritual Center YouTube. The Running Rev Ryan YouTube. That's where we are. All right, beloveds. Do what you need to do to make it a fantastic day, a wonderful day, an amazing day, a good day. And as always, if that is too much pressure, simply have a day. Simply have a day. All right, beloveds. Take care of yourself and know that you're loved.